If you are over 60 years old and have arthritis in your knee, a knee replacement may indeed be the best solution for you. But what if you are younger than 55 and a knee replacement is recommended? Will this arthroplasty really last a lifetime without a significant wear? Or the doctor you visited in your mid-40s to 50s says to manage with some medications, and if that doesn't work, they can do some injections and stem cells, and when you reach 60, they'll operate. But what if the pain just doesn't go away? Can you wait until 60? You see on social media that they inject stem cells in the knee. Do you think stem cells will make this knee look like a 20-year-old knee? You've seen it on Instagram. They say they inject something into the knee, supposedly lasting a lifetime. Don't be naive. Do you really believe when they say that it will work for life, for a new method with results reported for a maximum of two to three years? I think you should watch this video as an alternative method. High tibial osteotomy might be a suitable method for you. Knee osteoarthritis, which we refer to as knee wear and tear, is the wearing down of the knee joint cartilage due aging or trauma. The cartilage wears away in places, and then the bones rub against each other, increasing the wear. So, the rubbing bones also wear down, leading to deformities and severe pain, eventually making it difficult to walk. As it progresses, the ligament on the worn side of the knee loosens, while on the opposite side stretches due to tension. This creates a sense of looseness and instability. The patient starts to walk very slowly with short steps for fear of falling. When they are unable to walk 300 meters, he finds it difficult to carry out even daily needs. He cannot do his grocery shopping, climb the stairs, or even go to his neighbor in the next block. In advanced stages, even movements within the house may be restricted for toilet needs. At times, you may experience aching and throbbing pains even when the knee is at rest at night. In order to get rid of this condition, they start taking painkillers. On the other hand, some of the painkillers can even cause stomach disorders and kidney failure if used regularly. I have explained the whole process, but you should take care of it before you reach the final stage. Because if you wait until the last stage, the bones of the knee will be deformed too much and problems such as widespread osteoporosis, weight gain and depression may develop due to inactivity. If you are over the age of 60 to 65, knee replacement is often an excellent solution. A well-performed knee replacement at the age of 60 can serve the patient for 20 to 25 years without significant wear. Most likely, this knee problem will never occur again in the rest of the life. The knee can bend around 100 to 110 degrees, which is quite sufficient for this age group of patients. However, for younger and more active individuals, we have doubts about the prosthesis functioning without issues for a lifetime. Patients in this age group will have a very intense daily rush and expectations. Naturally, how long that arthroplasty will last depends not on how many years it is in the joint, but on how much it is used. Moreover, when we tell these active individuals that their knee will only bend to 100 degrees after a knee replacement, how sufficient will that be for their age group? If we have no other choice, knee replacement can be made for these young patients as the lesser of two evils. Before the operation, we tell the patient that after 20 years, the prosthesis may wear out and need to be replaced again. Don't think, you see, there is a solution after all, because revision surgeries for knee replacements never achieve the same success as the first one. In these relatively young patients, high tibial osteotomy is an excellent alternative method for the patient if appropriate. Moreover, unlike knee replacement, it offers the patient a near normal joint function. Some patients can even kneel on the floor easily. So what is this method? In young and healthy individuals, the joint cartilage, underlying bone and menisci can bear any load within physiological limits. However, with age, and especially if meniscus tears are not properly treated, cartilage wear may accelerate. This condition is typically more pronounced on the medial side of the knee, often resulting in the knee bowing outward. Normally, if you draw a line from the center of the hip joint to the ankle, this line passes right through the center of the knee joint. In the presence of osteoarthritis, wear on the medial side of the knee disrupts this alignment. The legs take the shape of a parenthesis. As the medial half of the knee bears more weight, the outer half remains unloaded, preserving the cartilage in that area. A high tibial osteotomy corrects the alignment of the joint by making a correction in the bone below the knee. We redirect the load to the outer part of the knee, which remains unloaded and unworn. I explain this method to my patients like this. 
When your car tires wear out, and if you have a front wheel drive car, normally the front tires will wear out more. You can manage for a while longer by swapping the front tires with the rear ones. Actually, the tire you are swapping in is not new either. At least it will keep you going for a while without any more expense. In this method, we ensure that this knee lasts for 10 to 15 years by giving load to the outer part of the joint that is not worn. In thin and petite patients, this surgery sometimes can provide lifelong comfort for them. In addition, after this surgery, patients' knees can be fully bent and they can also kneel on the ground. Although there are different techniques, let me briefly explain the most popular method. Through a skin incision of about 10 cm from the medial side of the knee, the upper part of the bone just below the knee, which we call the tibia, is cut and the bone here is opened in a wedge shape. In relatively minor corrections, the gap can fill with bone in on its own within a few months with plate and screw fixation. However, when more than 10 degrees of correction is required, a bone graft taken from the pelvic bone can be placed in between. Taking a bone graft does not cause any additional problems to the patient, except for a day or two of pain. Alternatively, ready-made allografts prepared from cadavers can also be used. However, since the healing process with allografts can be a bit longer, I prefer to use the patient's own bone if necessary for a more reliable recovery. After the correction and if necessary interposition of bone, the corrected bone is fixed with plates and screws placed on the bone. The post-operative healing process is a little more than knee replacement. For six weeks, we allow partial weight bearing using crutches. Full recovery will be after two and a half to three months. Once this period is over, patients can enjoy the comfort that life has to offer again. The plates and screws placed here do not need to be removed afterwards and do not cause any problems. As I mentioned earlier, in thin individuals this procedure may not require surgery again for a lifetime. If cartilage wear and joint damage continue in 10 or 20 years later, another surgery can be performed to remove the plate and screws and in the same session a knee replacement can be done successfully. Moreover, the knee replacement performed on these knees is as successful as it was performed for the first time. Sometimes, even without any pain and any other discomfort, younger individuals may want this surgery due to cosmetic concerns. Dear young people, this procedure is not like getting lip fillers or cosmetic rhinoplasty. Although technically possible to do it bilaterally, it will be difficult for you. It is also quite stressful to take an individual who is pain-free and able to play sports and football out of their daily routine for an extended period. If you have such an intention, I will warn you here, but the decision is yours. In this video, I tried to answer the question of knee replacement or high tibial osteotomy. It is very important to consider the advantages and challenges of both methods before making a decision. I tried to emphasize how important it is for young patients to consider the long-term outcomes when planning for a knee replacement. I hope I was able to convey this successfully. May you have healthy and active days throughout your life.